Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with The Creativity Cave. Welcome to another video. I have two gorgeous projects to create for you today and I hope that you're going to love them. I've got some great tips for each. So I am going to be using the Band Together Bundle from Stamp It Up and I love this set and I keep forgetting about it, which is dumb. Um, what I love about it so much is that we've got this gorgeous floral image, of course, but the dies are where this bundle just really shines. So actually, and I have a bunch of them out right now because I was playing with them. So here are um, a couple of the bands. There's actually three different bands that come with this set. And then there is a label, an oval, and then some kind of coordinating pieces as well. And then this right here die cuts uh, the flower from the big flower. Now, when I was working with this last night, I decided I really just needed to do some painting. I love to watercolor. So I've got some really great tips for you for watercoloring. I find it to be quite relaxing. So you can see I've got a really beautiful watercolored image here. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And by the way, my, none of my photos do justice to this card. Um, it's just, it's really pretty in person. All right. So to start, I'm going to use my Stampin' um, Embossing Buddy and I just drop it on my uh, cardstock and that powder will keep the little flecks from sticking in places I don't want them to be. I'll then take my Versamark stamp pad and I've got my stamp on here and you're going to laugh. I'm kind of, this is really the epitome of how lazy I am. <laughs> so I, this is a E block. And then I think F is the big background stamp sized block, which is really what you would need. Or you could use your Stamparatus, right? Okay. So both of those things were just too much work for me. So I just slapped this on a smaller block and made it work because I was too lazy because my, um, my big background stamp has a background stamp stuck to it. Plus, it's all the way on, the, on my top shelf. I mean, I'd have to, like, literally get up and grab it. <laughs> and my Stamparatus plates all have something on them right now, so I'd have to remove all those. So I just use this. I hope that makes you love me just a little teeny tiny bit more. <laughs> Because you know this information. Either that or you're judging all the way through this video, but that's okay. Although I do have a strict policy of not judging, it's all right if you need to judge me a little. I can I can live with that. <laughs> all right. So there we go. I've stamped this on my piece of watercolor paper. Now the key to the whole watercoloring thing is to use the right supplies. So watercolor paper is absolutely 100% important. It's the key to the success. So I'm just going to take and put some of my white embossing powder on here. I'll tap off the excess and now you can see my beautiful image and then I will heat emboss with my heat gun. Um, every so often people ask if you can use a hair dryer for this and the answer is, to, is no. Um, it doesn't heat up enough and it blows too much. And of course, all I can say is that's what she said, but whatever. <laughs> I have been watching a bit of The Office in my quarantining. <laughs> um, I, I, I really think, and I should have started this petition much sooner, that they should have put Friends back on Netflix for the quarantine. But luckily, I've been watching it on TBS during the, the day, and it's um, literally, I have it on my TV right now, and it's the episode where um, Rachel finds out that Ross likes her. I love those beginning episodes. They're so sweet. <laughs> Everybody's so young and cute. Not that they're not cute all the time in the show, but you know. All right, so there we go. Um, next, I'm going to do some watercoloring. And so I'm going to use my Aqua Painter. If you've never seen one, they just have water in the barrel. And then it's a regular paintbrush on the tip. And I love using this because you don't have to worry about having a bottle or a glass of water next to you that you might spill. 
Um, so that's really helpful. And then um, I have just a, um, a cloth of some kind. This is literally a <laughs> wet wipe that's dried out, but I like to use like an old rag. I have my kids old burp rags that works really well. All right, the next thing, oh, the other thing I use is a Stampin' Chamois, actually. I'll grab that in just a second to show you. Okay, so I'm going to use three colors, four colors, to do my watercoloring. I've got Coastal Cabana, Mango Melody, Granny Apple Green, and some Smoky Slate. And you might be thinking, Smoky Slate, why? I'll show you, don't worry. So to get the ink in my ink pad, I'm just gonna squeeze the lid to the pad and that picks up all kinds of ink, which is great. Um, if you don't wanna do that, you can also put a drip of reinker on a clear block and that works really well. So I wanna start by putting just a little dab of, of my darker bit of ink near the base of each petal. And then I'm going to pull that color out to the remainder of the petal. Petal, And so you can see I'm just going around. And I'll pick up a little more color because you kind of lose it after you keep painting. And it's okay if it dries. Again, I just can't... can't um, say enough that you need to have um, watercolor paper for this to work well. I'm laughing because I just heard the sound of a Snapchat, which means that my son is in my office behind me. <laughs> oh, do you guys know the sound of a Snapchat? All right, so I'm just going to keep blending out this color as I go around. And the other thing I really like about um, embossing your image that you watercolor is that it kind of holds the color in, you know, it's kind of corralled in the inside the lines of the watercoloring area that you're working with, which is nice. Um, it prevents things bleeding a little bit from where you don't want them to go. So that is a good thing. All right, so I'm just going to keep going around here. Now, I will probably add a little bit of color back into a few places. And then when things dry, you just kind of can clean them out. Now, if you get too much water on your brush or too much color on your brush, that's what you've got your little rag for. Get rid of it. Then you can keep on going. Now, the thing about when your area that you're working in is still wet, it will blend really nicely for you. And if not, you can just add a little bit more color and then you'll get that blending happening. So it works really great. If you like to color with Stampin' Blends, um, a lot of the same principles hold true. I think watercoloring is easier to blend and then kind of some magical things happen when the water sort of helps the color move so that's kind of fun as you can see isn't that awesome um and then just let things kind of dry so i'm going to go down here one thing you can do too is you can kind of wet down the whole area you can see i don't have too much color on my brush right now so i can wet down this whole area that i want to color i'm going to leave these two petals to be green on this sort of half open bud. So I've got a little bit of color in there, but then I can pick up dark color and just put it towards the base. And then the water that's in there will help it blend out. But then again, those little areas of embossing will prevent it from bleeding where you don't want it to go. Now you can get it to bleed if you have too much water, but it's kind of cool how that works. Um, sometimes though with this method you don't get quite the level of blending you want so you might have to go back and sort of help it along the way but that's just one way watercoloring is so fun to just play with so I would really encourage you to get some watercolor paper emboss a few outline images and then just play with color and and water and see how they all interact a little bit with one another so it's lots of fun now here's one other little thing I did get a little bit of ink right there and I don't want that there. So if I just take my clean brush with clean water 
and just keep going over that, I literally can erase that extra ink that was right there and see now it's gone. Isn't that awesome? Okay, I'm gonna want that to dry real good before I add my center color. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna do my leaf. Now, oops, gotta get some ink on there. Okay, so I'm using Granny Apple Green for the leaf or the greenery. And I'm just going to draw kind of a line going down here. And uh, let's see, kind of some lines here and here. And then here and on the lower side of this one. Okay, so that looks good. And then I'll start blending. So it's kind of like when you're using Stampin' Blends, you put a dark line down and then you use the lighter blend to kind of blend out the color and get that gradient. Same thing with watercoloring. It's really simple. But instead of having that second blend, you're just going to use your aqua painter with more water than, than the first time. And then you can always add more, just like in Stampin' Blends. You can add more color if you need to. Take color away. Um, so it's, it's really flexible. That's what I love about it. Now, if you're using regular Whisper White cardstock, you cannot do the erasing. You'll get pilling of the cardstock. It, it will look basically horrible, to be blunt. You can... You can do just real basic coloring, but you cannot get shading. You can't get that pretty watercolor look. So there's a big difference. Um, I know a lot of people like to use um, shimmer white cardstock. I don't like that either. It's, it's just not as good as watercolor paper. So, okay. So there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I love when I get kind of those watercolor lines in my painting. And pardon my... This is, this is the casualty of the corona is I desperately need to get my nails done. My, the rest of my nails look good. I mean, they're growing out, but I broke this one. I bite my thumbnails when I get stressed, <laughs> frustrated. And so that's kind of what happened there. <laughs> but remember, we don't judge at the creativity cave, so it's okay. All right, I'm going to pick up some Mango Melody. I love this bright pop of color in the center of these flowers. And I don't know what these flowers are. I don't know what color they're supposed to be. But in my world, they are Coastal Cabana and Mango Melody because Coastal Cabana is the color that lets us know God loves us, so it all works out. My son is in here, and he thinks it's funny listening to me shoot this video. So he's 14. <laughs> Fresh, freshly turned 14 last week. <laughs> but there we go. There's the center. Kind of cool. All right. Um, now you can see this one's maybe a little bit more subtle. I have a little more color here, but either way it works. But do you notice how that they're a little bit different here? And here's the difference is I'm going to add my fourth color and that color is going to be smoky slate. So what I'm gonna do with my smoky slate is actually take and, um, I gotta get a little more ink on the pad. I'm gonna take and color the background. It's really subtle, but you can add smoky slate in the background and then, and you want to keep it really light, okay? so. This is as dark as it's going to be is right here. And then I'm going to blend it out. I literally will not pick up any more ink because this is plenty. And I'm going to blend it out to basically nothing. Okay, so I've actually just cleaned my brush. So I really want this to be light and blended as I go. And I'll go all the way around my whole image. All right, and this just really kind of adds a lot of depth to your picture because it's not now just flowers free floating. Now they're kind of grounded. There's a background where they're coming from, just like actual <laughs> real life. Okay. And I'm still picking up some of that color and it might not even look like there's any color that I'm doing right here, but there is just a teeny tiny hint of color in there. And when 
you just blend it all out. You don't see it much, but it really, it really adds something to your coloring. And you can kind of keep messing with it till you're happy. And here again, this is something you couldn't ever do on Whisper White, but you can do it on watercolor paper. So it's a really subtle touch. Now the last thing I'm going to show you, um, I did over here, and I might try this one with a different color, but I have these beautiful little watercolor speckles, and I love adding that. I think it adds a lot to the picture. Um, now the way I do that, and I'm going to try this in a different color, and you guys can tell me which one you prefer. I'm going to try it in Smoky Slate this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze my aqua painter so that it's really like literally almost drippy wet. You don't want it super drippy, but wet. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up all this color, really load up my brush with a lot of color. Okay. And then I need a crappy block. <laughs> now my crappy block came from a kit. The kits tend to have these ones with the sharp edges, not our normal, like this is our normal block with the nice curved edges that are easier on your hands. But the free block that comes in a kit usually has this sharp edge. A paper pumpkin block would work great too, the one you get in the first paper pumpkin kit. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to flick the end of my brush. I'm like going to push on it and then that will give me flex. So you got to watch what you're doing. Okay, so you got to do it hard. There we go. Okay. And look at all that splatter. It's so awesome. So I'm just going to wipe my block off and you'll never know. This is actually my spritzing block. <laughs> and then when you look at it, look at all those speckles you've got on there. So you want to make sure what you've painted is dry before you do this. Otherwise, the speckles will just bleed and you won't see anything. Um, so you want to make sure everything's dry before you start, but then there you go. And I love all the different colors. You know, there's darker and lighter, I guess I should say values. And then here I did this one in the Coastal Cabana. So you can tell me in the comments if you like the gray speckles or the Coastal Cabana speckles better. So, all right, let's finish this card up. All right, first I got to wipe off the speckles from my table. <laughs> all right so the rest of this is easy first of all we want this to dry so I'm going to set that aside for a second and then we might actually do our little box first and then we'll put the rest of this together so I do just have a coastal cabana card base and then I've got a layer of smoky slate that we'll attach it to but I'm going to show you my box it's crazy easy so this is our craft pillow boxes so I'm just going to take one of these and when you do these boxes, um, you just kind of pop them open and then, and then you um, put the little, oops, they're scored. And you just pop them in like so. That's pretty easy. I mean, they really are easy. These are really awesome gift card holders. So if you're giving a gift card to somebody, maybe for their birthday or I don't know about you, but I have a graduation coming up. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but those are uh, great for gift card holders. And then it's not just like in an envelope. All right, so I wanted to stamp on mine. So I have two ovals. One is for my card and then one is for my box. And I'm going to use two different sentiments for my stamp set and ink them up both in my um, Calypso, or Coastal Cabana ink. You know, the color that lets us know God loves us. You just can't say that enough. <laughs> we need to know that now, right? <laughs> so I'm just pressing on this. I'm giving it a little bit of extra time. I'm not rocking it, but I'm kind of wiggling it just to make sure the ink is coming off don't wiggle it like that but just like ink come off there we go looks good then I'll do the same thing um on my second one but I have a different sentiment you can do the same one it doesn't matter but I just thought I'd mix it up same thing you can see I'm wiggling it I'm not moving anything I'm just uh, getting it down beautiful inside and out so nice. Okay, so I also die cut the medium size band, and it's just so pretty. Of course, I used some uh, Calypso Coral. No, Coastal Cabana. I get my 
my alliterations mixed up. I also die cut this little label that's part of the dies and I'm going to sit, it's in vellum. I'm going to put it right behind here. Just, I needed something to kind of br break up the dots from this fancy business, you know, because otherwise it's just like a lot is happening, but I, I kind of liked this on here. So to attach it, I'm actually going to just put a line of snail. This will get covered up but I'm just tacking it down onto my pillow box like that, okay? Centered up, that's fairly centered. I'll get it totally centered now. There we go. All right, and then um, I'm also going to take and glue dot these. Now I'm gonna put a glue dot right, right here, like right there as well as at the end of this. So two glue dots on each side and um, one is to kind of adhere it to the front and then the other is to adhere the band to the little flaps of my box. And what I love about this is it allows the recipient to open and close their box a bunch of times because it's so pretty. And they're, wanna, they're gonna wanna get the good stuff out. But this way they don't have to ruin the packaging in order to do that. So I think that's really awesome. All right, and then finally, I'm gonna take and put a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this. Oops, goodness. I've got this sheet of Dimensionals, like, it's kind of goofy. It's from a really old paper pumpkin kit that I just found. <laughs> I think it might be defective, but you know what? I don't care, I'm still using them. <laughs> All right, so I put this on my box and look at how gorgeous that is. So easy. All right, and then you can see this just slides around on the side and then your box, you know, you can still get in and out of it without ruining the box, which is awesome. So you could reuse it, which is would be great too. Okay, now this is dry, I think, or pretty close to it. So let's put the rest of this together. I used some of our flax trim. And I'm just going to run a line of that going across my card down here at the bottom, like so. You can either include your own hair in this process or not. It's up to you. <laughs> All right. It's like a long person hair problem. I really do have <laughs> that. Then I'll just snip the end of this off. And I'll adhere this with some glue dots. Okay, so I'll put maybe three on here, one on each end and then in the middle. And then those glue dots will stick right to my ribbon. Okay, and we'll put it on straight and everything, just like that. And then I will adhere this to, just looking for my glue, I will adhere this to my layer of smoky slate and all the dimensions are on my blog. I want to say, and they're also in the description of this video. I want to say this is like three and a half by four and three quarters and then three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So just to be positive about that, make sure you put or check out the description for the the legit dimensions. <laughs> All right. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to pop this whole layer up onto my card because I think that just makes it look fancy and nice. And so I'll use my little dimensionals for that. And I'm trying to be careful not to touch my card because I know there's a couple speckles on here that are still a little wet. And then we're going to do one final thing to this, which is one of my favorites. Um, and that is to do a little uh, spritzing with my Clear Wink of Stella. So I store my Clear Wink of Stella upside down like this so that everything kind of sinks to the tip. And then I'm just gonna literally smack this against something I grabbed a bone folder, but you can use whatever, a marker or whatever. Scissors, doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna smack on it pretty hard. And when I do that, there's little spritzes of, of sparkle that come out. And then hopefully you can see there's shimmer on here now. Do you see all the little sprinkles of shimmer that I've kind of gotten all over my card? So isn't that awesome? So that's just my last little touch for this card. So I've got a great card. 
I've got a great little gift card holder or package. Of course, something small and like full of diamonds would fit in here nicely too. You know, just, you know, whatever. Anyway, so there's all of these beautiful things ready for you to give yourself a try. So let me know if you like the gray speckles or the blue speckles. All right. So thank you guys so much for stamping with me. Now, if you want to make these, recreate these projects on your own, please shop my online store. There's a link in the description of this video to shop as well as all the products that I used on today's projects. And they're all linked to my online store. Of course, I would be so grateful for your business. It helps me continue to make these awesome videos for you each week. So happy stamping, my friends. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.